their screeches and screw-ups are felt all across the fictional world. You know, there's like a buttload of gangs at this school. This one gang kept wanting me to join because I'm pretty good with a bow staff. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 annoying major characters in movies. So let's do what we do best. Let's run out of here, screaming in fear, like a couple of lunatics, okay? Okay! For this list, we're looking at those big screen characters that are specifically written to be annoying or irritating to characters around them or to the audiences themselves. Here we go. Up and out! What do you really mean? Yeah, I do. Number 10, Willy Wonka. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. Let's start things off with everyone's favorite chocolatier. Well, he's not your favorite unless you've actually met the guy. My name is Willy Wonka. <laughs> Taking a leap away from Gene Wilder's performance in 1971, Johnny Depp plays the madman as a straight up, well, madman. Enjoy. His disregard for the safety of the children is one thing, his shrill, high-pitched laugh is something else. You can suck on it all year, and it'll never get any smaller. <laughs> Isn't that neat? With the attitude of a child and far worse mannerisms, this Wonka proves more of a slugworth than a genius. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Number 9. Shaggy Rogers and Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> They're one of the world's most recognizable comedic duos, but that's not to say they aren't always screwing up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, quit around, man. In the 2002 film, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo managed to push the limits of their friend's patience by hitting them in the face and farting at Sarah Michelle Gellar's Daphne. <laughs> Known for completely destroying the group's plans in the animated TV series, these two are further written as the members of one of the most annoying bromances in movie history in this live-action flick. <laughs> Wait, James Gunn wrote this film? As in, the director behind Guardians of the Galaxy? Alright. Ready! Kill me now! <laughs> Number 8. Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. What are you gonna do today, Napoleon? Whatever I feel like I wanna do. Gosh! Movie nerds tend to be awkward and sympathetic, but never quite as irritating as this. Get off my property or I'll call the cops on you! Lacking in friends, Napoleon Dynamite makes up for it by telling the world of his grand achievements, be it the time he was hunting wolverines in Alaska or his skills with a bow staff. Ugh. Idiot! His unfriendly attitude certainly doesn't help his classmates tolerate him, or his family for that matter. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. A slightly spiteful and compulsive liar, we doubt that even a liger would put up with him. What are you drawing? A liger. What's a liger? It's pretty much my favorite animal. It's like a lion and a tiger mixed. Redford's skills and magic. Number seven, Fred, Crawl, son-in-law. My name's Carl. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pauly Shore has really outdone himself this time. Oops, wrong button. As if bad, don't leave me hanging puns weren't enough, Crawl is the party animal who's perfectly suited to get on the nerves of any conservative father. Oh, McWalter had a farm. E-I-E-I-O, and on this farm he had a kid with squishy puffy cheek. His eccentric personality and lack of responsibility proved to be the bane of everyone around him. I'm gonna plow ya! Oh no! Ever intruding on the lives of the Warner family, Crawl brings a whole new meaning to the word aggravating. Ow! Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, why did you do that? Number six, Nikki, little Nikki. Can I wash my winky in your kitchen sinky? You're a real jerk! Being a disappointment to your father is always annoying, especially if your dad is the devil. You're a good devil, dad. And I also happen to be a Jets fan. But that doesn't stop Nikki from irritating the rest of New York, too. Whether it's by demanding that random pedestrians get in the flask, or by committing the most evil of deeds, turning Coke into Pepsi. This Coke tastes like Pepsi. Doomed to be an annoying character, Nikki is too nice to be a devil and too annoying to be anything but a nuisance. Okay, mercy, you win, I give, game over. Number five, Wilhelmina, Willie Scott, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Ever since you got into my club, you haven't been able to take your eyes off me. Oh yeah? 
Everyone's favorite damsel in distress had to be on this list somewhere, with her one line of dialogue screaming. The biggest trouble with her is the noise. A singer by trade, Willy has little to no place venturing through the Temple of Doom, but I suppose we believe that's what works about her. Trouble? What sort of... She's terrible at riding an elephant and only serves to embarrass herself in front of Indy's most powerful politicians. But her screaming, shrieking, and yelling do help to make Indy look that much more badass. Even if she could have turned the volume down just a little. Number four, Bella Swan, The Twilight Series. I don't care. Nobody likes a flip-flopper, especially a flip-flopper who can't decide between a werewolf and a vampire. Okay, well, let's say for argument's sake that I'm not smart. Aside from being more useless than, well, the series itself, Bella Swan manages to spend months of her life wasting her mind over trying to choose which fantasy boy she likes more. I'm only afraid of losing you. I feel like you're gonna disappear. Her indecisiveness only helps to put the vampire and werewolf clans against each other and ultimately threaten the rest of the world. Nice going, Bella. We hope you're pleased with yourself. I mean, why didn't you just let the van crush me and save yourself all this regret? Number three, Bruno Gayhard, Bruno. I am the host of Funky Tide, the most important TV fashion show in any German speaking country. Apart from Germany. We could have picked any of Sasha Baron Cohen's eccentric characters, but this flamboyant fashion journalist is one that surpasses them all. Once I'm straight, can I still play the clarinet? If it doesn't remind you about some of the, 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 the behavior that you engaged in when you put your lips around it, if it doesn't remind you of that, then I say go for it and play the clarinet with everything inside of you. The fashionista spends the runtime of this mockumentary being more offensively outlandish than one would ever think possible. Ish was going to be the biggest Austrian superstar since Hitler. Bruno's irritation factor is almost artistic. Whether he's giving his adopted baby a more appropriate name, OJ, or making advances on Ron Paul. Whoops. My Heusen is to All right, get out of here. Man, not even Harrison Ford likes him. Also, here I am with Harrison Ford. For <laughs> Number two, Guru Maurice Pitka, the love guru. Who? Guru Tagan Mapuda. You are so good with nunchucks, yet you are blind. This was a close call between Mike Myers' other foray into the annoying with his role in Cat in the Hat. Son of a bitch! But while the cat is merely childish and intrusive, Guru Pitka is that and so much more. I am His Holiness the Guru Pitka. Welcome to my ashram, the Ecumenical Intuitive Enlightenment Initiative Organization, or EIEIO. His reason for becoming a guru is to have women fawn over him and to be on Oprah, which you have to admit is not the most selfless of goals. If I fix their marriage, I get on Oprah. And if I get on Oprah, I'm the next Deepak Chopra! Then there's his slightly pretentious and immature nature, which only cement how bothersome of a man he is. Some people call me the space cowboy. Yeah. Some call me the gangster of love. Before we reveal our most annoying protagonist, here are some honorable mentions. The ring is mine. He couldn't even crack his knuckles without my help. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rubble, for confessing to being Mr. Flintstone's accomplice. You're welcome. <laughs> what? Hi, it's Fred! Today is Friday! Oh my god, say that fast, it sounds like Fred Day! Friday, Fred Day, Friday, Fred Day. No, no, don't feel guilty about me. So long, and thanks for nothing. That's the closet! Number one. Jill Sadelstein, Jack and Jill. Jill Sadelstein, come on down! You're the next contestant on The Price is Right! No, it's not just because she's played by Adam Sandler, although that probably doesn't help. Tell me you don't feel this. I didn't feel it. Maybe if you did it harder. 
monumentally optimistic and intrusive. Jill is not only annoying to every other character in the film, but devastatingly so for the audience. Her unmoved state of ecstasy is only matched by her constant failings, especially when she gives Mexican food a try. I'm guessing Mexican? Yes, Mexican! With an inability to even lower the volume of her speech, Jill is undeniably the most annoying in a very annoying list. Are you going bald? Huh? No, 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 you're getting fatter and your hair doesn't realize it needs to cover more face. Okay. Do you agree with our list? Which infuriating character do you think should be given a mention? <laughs> Wasn't that just magnificent? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Mojo, I love you. Thank you.